Switching topic now, the legalization of marijuana seems we're closer and closer to a universal agreement on the issue. One of the first states to legalize cannabis was Colorado. And now there's a new documentary out about this, as well as the press coverage on the state's marijuana culture. Joining me here in studio is the man behind the film, Mitch Dickman, producer and director of Rolling Papers. Also with me is Ricardo Baca, the Denver Post's first ever marijuana editor. Ricardo is one of the focal points of Rolling Papers. The film will be in theaters and available on demand February 19th. Okay, Mitch, how's it going? It's going well. It's been it's been a good ride so far. Cannabis is a successful enterprise in Colorado. Um, I would say it's going that way. I think anything, any kind of implementation like this, that's this monumental, is a work in progress. And being just over two years into into the process, I think Colorado's handling it very well. Now it covers everything, right? Buying, selling, possession, use, retail, right? Correct. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying is kind of a work in, in progress. The, the state didn't exactly know how to regulate this drug and put it together pretty quickly when the voters decided in November of 2012 and then the first legal sale started January 1st of 2014. But, you know, all things considered, it's, it's, it's a good work in progress. Are you the first Ricardo marijuana editor in America? <laughs> you know, for at least daily newspapers, yeah, I think so. Are you a user? I am, yeah. Are you a user, Mitch? Yes. yes. Uh, is the product controlled? By that I mean, do the people of Colorado know that they're getting a safe, good product? It's on its way to getting there. You know, one of the things outlined in um, the first year of my job, which has happened to be captured in the film, was uh, the potency of marijuana-infused edibles was really up in the air. You know, you had these uh, amounts on the on the front of the package. It says 100 milligrams of activated THC. Uh, we did a bunch of testing to prove that you can't really trust that number. Uh, what we're doing now is we're doing testing to see if we can find pesticide residues in any of these products. And what we are finding is that um, you know there are a lot of pesticides being used on cannabis that's banned for use on marijuana that's illegal for use mm. it comes down to yet another one of these state versus federal battles for weed you have tax issues banking issues and now pesticide issues so why did you decide to do a documentary I mean it's a great opportunity uh, while I'm a user I'm not an advocate for it it's been a private type of thing but I enjoy the 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 craft of filmmaking and this was an unprecedented moment and there was an opportunity to collaborate with some colleagues in Colorado that that I'm very proud to to have worked with and so it was really an opportunity film that we approached strictly as kind of a fly on the wall to see what would happen you don't have to call it medical marijuana since it's correct all legal, yeah so exactly and they're actually medically obviously can get it right and there actually had been a film before that was kind of following the medical story and the debate of whether it was going to be legal or not and the fact that voters voted yes, we didn't really have to deal with that debate, and it was kind of, it's legal, now what? Uh, your law compared with other states, how many states legalized it now? My understanding is that there's five states in the District of Columbia. Do you expect it to be everywhere? Yeah, I mean, I think a major player is California in 2016, and, and again, we kind of shied away a little bit of the legalization issue within the film, but it definitely was a to topic of a conversation, and people knew that California is a giant, and the fact that it'll be on the ballot in 2016 will kind of sway what the federal government's going to do. They can't kind of stand on the sidelines anymore. You think there should be a federal law, Ricardo? I think there needs to be some sort of federal involvement. You know, I mentioned the state versus federal battles that are going on right now, and that's because you have all of these different regulatory systems in place, and yet nothing at the federal level other than just a general understanding for now that the Justice Department isn't going to come after these recreational or medical states. The president said it's as safe as alcohol. It's safer than alcohol, isn't it? You know, looking at it from a scientific, um, fact-based perspective, it's very much clearly safer than alcohol, which is unbelievable when you consider the things that we were told in decades past, even as recently as the 90s. You know, it's, uh, it's amazing what we've learned since then and the amount of information that's out there to tell us, you know, that this is still a, a mind-altering substance. This is still a possibly addictive substance up to 9% of users, but it's just not nearly as addictive as tobacco, as alcohol, as opioids. Uh, we're going to look at a clip now of Rolling Papers. Take a look. Are you high now? No, I'm not, actually. <laughs> 
this is the first time that recreational pot has been sold legally in the modern world. People are psyched. Piece of history. They're lining up around the block for legal marijuana sales in Colorado. It's a massive story. People are watching very closely what's happening here. Marijuana sales are beating expectations. For us to take it seriously is just smart journalism. The Denver Post has actually hired an editor to cover marijuana. It's close to my heart, and I want it to kick ass and be relevant. We have a brand new website, The Cannabis. Just in general, the newspaper business is hard. In case you haven't noticed, U.S. newspapers are folding at an alarming rate. The death of the great Denver paper, the Rocky Mountain News, the final edition. People are excited if the Post is going out on a limb and trying something like this. We're going to meet our pot critics. So I'm a marijuana critic. So are you high now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely high now. Smoke? Yeah, you ready? Huh. Tahoe, original gangster. This one has a nice apparent smell. A big nose of pine. A little forgetfulness. Good for sale. I'm remembering to write that down. A little bit of rubber. Buzzing. Lemon as well. Brian's got a perma smile. I could probably have stopped the review there, but I try to just smoke them all the way down. What's looming over the entire situation is that this is still a federally illegal substance, and the federal government can step in and shut this down at any point. What do you want viewers, Mitch, to take away from this? You know, in, in any project that I do, I want it to be a conversation piece. I think the kind of old school nature of documentaries being strictly issue, issue driven and kind of driving home an agenda is, is a little bit exhausting to audiences. So I hope that this is an entertaining, surprising look at the way a state handled it and the way journalism, which is an institution that, that we are constantly devaluing in our country. But I hope that both of those things kind of become conversation starters with whoever watches the film. It hasn't come up in the debate so far. Do you think it will be part of the presidential election debate? Uh, you know, it's not a primary issue on that level right now, and it probably won't be. It's definitely a secondary, tertiary um, uh, debate. But what we are seeing is that the majority of these candidates, especially all of them who are still in the race, are, are pro-states' rights. They, they've come out and already said that they do support these states continuing their experiments and continuing the current Obama Justice Department's um, belief that, hey, go for it, we're going to watch and see what happens and then eventually make regulation based on that. I recently spoke with Gary Johnson, former governor of New Mexico. He's making a White House bid as a libertarian candidate. He had this to say, watch. Are you in the marijuana business? Uh, I was the uh, president CEO of Cannabis Sativa uh, for uh, a year and a half. And uh, I did that, Larry, because um, I really believe that legalizing marijuana makes the world a better place. On the medicinal side, these products uh, directly compete with uh, opioids, with painkillers, with antidepressants, and marijuana products don't kill anybody. Uh, on the legal prescription side, these drugs kill statistically 100,000 people a year. And I have always maintained, Larry, that legalizing marijuana will lead to less overall substance abuse because it's so much safer than everything else that's out there, starting with alcohol. The campaign to legalize marijuana in Colorado was a campaign based on marijuana being safer than alcohol. Should it be discussed in the presidential race? It, it, it should be, and of course, uh, it's not. Gary Johnson's very <laughs> strong on this. <laughs> Lenny Bruce, the great comic, once said, marijuana will be legal everywhere someday because every law student I know smokes it. <laughs> uh, do you think we're going to see it in your lifetime? Legal everywhere. I do. Is it now mom and pop operations? Like who's who's behind making money with marijuana? Yeah, for the most part it is. Uh, but you have to recognize too that those mom and pop organizations, maybe they buy two more storefronts and then they acquire four others and then suddenly they are one of the largest players in the state. And right now one of my colleagues and I are working on a series to illustrate who some of these very big players are and we're talking 14, 15 shops within the state with plans to expand into Oregon, Washington and elsewhere. Is crime up in Colorado? Crime is slightly up year over year um, and marijuana related crime, meaning uh, crimes at pot shops or cultivations, those People are up robbing. as well. And, yeah. and marijuana DUIs were down in 2015 from 2014, so the state's already cracking down on that. Was there a lot of marijuana DUI? 
No, it's, it's a bit of a study that they, they didn't really have a process for testing that, and that, that was one of the implementations that they were putting in place. How much money has it meant for the state? You know, we just got the final numbers for 2015, and it ended up being about $996 million in sales and about $135 million in taxes, and that's 2015 alone. Of the $135 million in taxes, about $35 million of that is going directly towards school construction. So that was a big part of Amendment 64, which we all voted on in 2012, and, and it's good to see that, that those numbers are starting to flesh out. Rolling Papers is going to be distributed nationally, right? Correct, and theaters, internationally, yes. Theaters and... Yeah, we'll be in 20 cities across the country, and we'll be on all the video-on-demand platforms, and then we'll be in most of Europe. Going to be on one of the cable, to HBO? Yeah, it'll be iTunes, it'll be you know, Hulu, all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, Rolling Papers includes Ricardo's trip to Uruguay, the first country that legalized marijuana. What did you learn from Uruguay? Oh, I learned a lot. <laughs> in fact, many uh, regulators could go there and learn how not to regulate marijuana because they were the first country to do that. They just haven't rolled out these sales yet, which is in part an issue because the presidency uh, changed hands out there. Um, but you know, it, it was a fascinating study to see an entire nation looking out on this substance as something that's safer than alcohol, as something that can and can be consumed on a street corner in the middle of the city. So it's a very different approach, and, and it's fascinating now. Here we are in 2016. Justin Trudeau up north is on the path to make Canada that second country, and it looks like he'll be successful in pushing that forward to a point where regulated sales are actually happening. Is it a concern that it might affect people in the workplace? I don't if, think if so. If you're smoking pot and you're, you're working in the bank or you're... I mean, I don't think so. As Ricardo said before, you know, I mean, there have been alcohol policies re regulated relative to employment, and I don't think people are necessarily showing up drunk at work, and so I think it's the same thing with cannabis. And by the way, if there's no smoking in the workplace, that would include marijuana, right? Correct. That is creating yeah, smoke, correct. right? Yeah, the Colorado Clean Indoor Air Act it makes public consumption laws in Colorado very difficult because marijuana is included in, under that. Rolling Papers was funded through a Kickstarter? A portion of it was a Kickstarter. How'd you do that? A, you do? a portion of it was a Kickstarter. It was a huge thing. We launched it on 420, and Kickstarter is a wonderful tool to show crowd support, but we also were fortunate to have a lot of equity partners that backed the film, and then we were um, fortunate to be a part of the ArcView Investor Cannabis Network, where we pitched with other cannabis-related businesses, and there's a lot of savvy investors that saw this as a, as a great opportunity. What's the price of cannabis? Was it a cigarette? Yeah, you know, it just depends. Pre-rolled joints go anywhere from 10 to 25. And what would be the difference between a $10 smoke and a $25 smoke? Well, as he referred to, part of it is the difference in medical versus recreational. Part of the excise tax, I think, is believe, mm -hmm. believe is taken off to make it cheaper for medicinal users, and there's benefits within that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, there's, there's top shelf, there's connoisseur, there's, there's all different kinds of, of quality of marijuana that you can get. Is there a, like a top grade, grade A plus marijuana? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think for any commodity, they're going to figure out how to find that gourmet customer who's willing to pay more for something that may or may not be different than what's on a shelf a little bit lower. Can teenagers buy it? No, they cannot. They have to be how old? You have to be 21. 21. 21. Do you find statistics on use difference between men and women? Between men and women, I'm not sure how that breaks down. Something that, that's interesting that came just came out from SAMHSA, the federal agency, the substance abuse, I forget what else it stands for, but um, it showed in the first year of legal sales in Colorado, which was 2014, it showed that the teen monthly use of cannabis didn't go up at all. There was no negligible uh, okay. change, which, was, which surprised a lot of people. I think one of the uh, legalization opposition's primary concern is what about the kids, what happens to our, our children, our teenagers, when this substance becomes legal and sold to anybody with an ID, proving that they're over 21. And, and apparently, at least in year one, this is what happens. I hope everybody gets to see this. Thank, Thank you, you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Mitch Dickman and Ricardo Baca, Rolling Papers will be in theaters and available on demand beginning February 19th.